Well, I'm Charles Darby, and I'm Henry Clouseau's grandson. I, you know, lived here from the time I was born in 1934 uh, until I left to get married in 1956. From the time that I can remember, I guess when I was, you know, two, three, four years old, um, there was, of course, Henry Clouseau and his wife, my grandparents, uh, my mother and father, myself and a younger brother, and then later a younger sister. And you couldn't swing a dead cat in here without hitting another family member. Because really we lived downstairs and it wasn't that big. So uh, it, it was pretty crowded at times. Uh, my grandfather and grandmother slept in a very small bedroom in the back, and my parents and, a, a, and my brother, I guess, in a larger one. So it was pretty crowded around here. One bathroom, which was occupied most of the time. Probably should have had a sign on the door, occupied or not. But uh, we, we, we got by. Well, he designed the house. I think it was built in 2000, and, I mean 1909, around on Main Street. And then after the studio closed in 21, 22, uh, they moved it around here on Ninth Street on rollers, which always amazed me how they could, could do this, especially with a stucco house, why it just didn't crumble. But anyway, they moved it from where the, around near where the apartments are, right on around here to Ninth Street. You know, I don't know really what, what they did. I know after they got here, they changed it into a duplex. It was, a, as it is now, a one-family home, two-story home. And they separate, put, uh, built stairs outside to replace the pretty inside stairs and uh, had a porch up top and uh, rented out the upstairs. There was a perception in the neighborhood that we were rich because we lived in the big Crusoe house on Ninth Street, but that was not a fact, but we never really wanted for anything. And then after my dad died in 48, I think, uh, things went downhill pretty fast. <laughs> uh, as I say, after I was old enough, he wasn't doing a lot of productive work of, for money. He did a lot of uh, pro bono stuff for the Eartha White Mission or Clara White Mission, whatever it is, um, and for a few others, and he had a, a few small things. I would go down there often because I was very interested. I thought I wanted to be an architect at first. And um, he'd let me use some, one of his drawing tables and I'd fool around. Uh, I was one of only a few Boy Scouts in the whole city that ever got the architecture merit badge. Well, I had it, sort of had an inside track, you know. The only thing I remember is a f few things about some of the people uh, that were here that made the movies. And he actually, my grandmother would was a better storyteller than he was. He didn't talk about it a heck of a lot, um, but she would. Um, I think it was Oliver Hardy or Stan Oral, one of them that was here. You know which one? Hardy. Hardy, okay. And um, I think Buster Keaton might have been here. And there were several others that he mentioned or she mentioned that were here in the house, came to dinner and stuff like that. But other than that, no. As far, I mean, as far as the house was concerned, it was just another house. This was a hangout for me and my friends, though, and uh, that was, uh, th they slept on the couches in here quite a few times. One, oh, one of the things that was very interesting during World War II, this was headquarters for civil defense, 
when we had air raid drills. The big uh, dining room, which was just on the other side of the petition, and we had a big round table in there, and uh, my granddaddy and daddy, who were wardens, and uh, about once a month they'd have an air raid drill, and the block wardens would come over, and there'd be probably half a dozen of them sitting around the table in there, and pretending that we were having an air raid. And of course, everybody had to black their houses out and everything. And I was a, a messenger for the civil defense, and I'd get to go out and take me fake messages to other other uh, headquarters. Okay, my mom lived here for a while, and then she had she lived with us for a while. My sister and her husband lived here for quite a while until the house was sold. And I want to say that was 1968, but I'm not positive. Uh, Clouseau died in 64, and I don't remember what year his, uh, his widow, what would you say, 66, 67, something. Yeah, Just, three years later. Yeah, two or three years afterwards. And uh, as far as I know, there still were some people living upstairs during that period of time. Okay, me and my sister, uh, we couldn't afford to keep it up, and we really weren't terribly interested in living in the city. I was living on the north side then. And uh, anyway, Main Street Baptist Church, which is now some other church, I don't know the name of it down there, uh, wanted it, but they wanted to tear it down and build for parking for the church, and we didn't want that. So the woman next door, uh, Mer Mercedes... Mercedes. Mercedes, what was her last name? Replogle. Rep Replogle. Uh, offered us, offered to buy it somewhat less than the church did, but we accepted that because we didn't want to see it torn down. So I don't know what she did with it. I guess she used it as rental property. As far as I know, she never lived here herself. Sometimes after my grandmother passed away, my sister was living here and her husband and she, the bathroom was right off that way, and she was uh, giving her kids a bath, and she swears she saw someone, her, my grandmother supposedly, walk down the hall past the entrance to the bathroom. So I never experienced myself. I never, the whole time I lived in the house, uh, I never experienced anything myself, but they talk about the, she, she swears she saw a ghost.